How to peer review a paper. The first question you need to ask is what is peer review? This was brought up a bit during the library orientation session. Peer review is essentially evaluation and feedback from professional peers. It's an important element of scholarship and it's not just for journals. It is something that you will do with your peers throughout this program. So with that said, how do you do it? First, make sure you have all your supplies handy. When somebody is peer reviewing for a journal, yes, they bring their own expertise and knowledge to the table, but they're also going to have at hand the submission guidelines of that particular publication, and if they had put out a call for specific things, a request for papers, then they're going to have the details of that as well, because they need to know not only is this a good paper, but does it fit this journal. In your case, you're looking not only is this a good paper, but does it fit what was requested and what it's going to be graded on for this course. So you want to have your syllabus handy, or at least the rubric from Blackboard handy. There is a lot more detail on the printed page of the syllabus, not that you have to print it out, you can just bring it up on the screen, possibly have it in another tab or another window. And then it wouldn't hurt to also have your storytelling in 609 feedback form, because the questions on there may also help you to give useful feedback. Step two, evaluate as you read. Some people preferred to read through completely first and then go back and give feedback. That's great if you have the time to do that. Most of you do not. So your gut level reactions as you're reading are also very helpful to the author. So you can give the feedback as you go. If you're comfortable doing so, you can use the comment feature that's found on the review tab in Microsoft Word to click where you want to put a comment and it will pop up a little bubble on the side where you can type in essentially a sticky note. That's similar to what you receive for feedback on your assignments. It's actually a bit more legible than what Blackboard does. If you're not comfortable doing that, then you can just write a list of things and put them directly into the comment box on Discussion Board. Whatever works best for you. But some of the things you should be evaluating along the way are, do you understand the author's objective? And do they make their case effectively? Those are two really big things. If they're trying to cover so many things that you can't really say what the specific objective is, then they need to know that. And if they've sort of talked about a problem but haven't really made a case for what to do about it, then you need to let them know that as well. And do they hit all of the requirements of the assignment? That's why you've got the syllabus or the rubric right there. Hey, you know what? I did get your point. I do think you made your case, but I'm looking at this first paragraph and I don't see anything that really fits what we were told a thesis statement is supposed to do. And I see right here that it says one of the things you're getting graded on is whether that thesis statement is within the first paragraph. And then, obviously, if you notice any technical errors, spelling, grammar, punctuation, we all have sort of an insta autocorrect built into our eyes. So when we're reading our own writing, we see what we know we meant to put, which is not always what made it to the page, especially when you're talking about things that are close misspellings, but are still words, so therefore spell check does not catch them. So if you notice any of those, by all means, let them know. Step three is to give your feedback. So you'd want to absolutely tell the author what worked, because if all you get is this is wrong, that is wrong, the other thing is wrong, then that's very disheartening. There are various different ideas out there about how much positive versus how much negative feedback should be given. And make sure that there is at least something that you're telling them 
what was good whether it's even if everything else needs work but their idea looks really interesting they need to know that your idea is great I see kind of where you're going with it here are some things that I think will help you get there better and here are the things that I didn't get so then you tell them what could have been better and what suggestions you have to get there that does not mean you're rewriting their paper for them if they have a sentence that was so long that you felt out of breath just reading it then you might say this sentence is really wrong excuse me really long you might want to think about breaking it up you don't have to do it for them but let them know because again when you're reading what you wrote you don't necessarily pick up on those things which somebody else can or if say they brought in these examples but you think that it would make a much stronger case for what they're trying to argue if they did it in a different order then you might tell them you know what this one that you had somewhere in the middle I think is so powerful it should be at the end that really just brings everything home for you that's also a useful piece of feedback so once you've done the giving of feedback the flip side of it is somebody else is giving feedback on your paper so what do you do with that first thing you do is take a deep breath because your initial reaction is going to be no but wait and that's fine that's normal that's human whatever suggestions were made for improvement are just that suggestions so give your initial reaction some time to dissipate it is very natural to feel defensive about something that you have worked hard on when somebody's saying you need to fix this this and this but give yourself a chance to let that go and remember that whoever gave you suggestions to improve your paper also received suggestions to improve theirs. so everything that you're feeling about the feedback you got they are probably feeling too you're all in this together and you're all in this to help each other Step two is to decide what's helpful. Some feedback you get is going to be more helpful than other feedback. And your paper is still your paper. So you're the one who decides what you're going to actually submit. So if somebody told you, for example, this particular piece of evidence that you introduced midway through, I think was so strong that I think it would make your case better to bring it to the end and you look at it and say no 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 I really want to end on this other note then fine you might also find that they're giving you feedback that would take your point in a completely different direction than you were trying to go that's also useful so your response to that might not be to take the suggestion they gave you but to take a step back and say okay if that's where they thought I was going let me look at how I can make it clearer where I was trying to go and step three four five six seven ad infinitum is to revise 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 make the adjustments and edits that you believe will improve your paper do yourself a favor and read it out loud that's one of the best ways to find some of those errors that your eye tends to autocorrect. It also lets you know when a sentence is going so long that it's going to make your reader feel out of breath even though they're not reading it out loud. Make some more adjustments and edits based on that experience. And then have somebody else read it. That could be somebody who has no expertise in the field. And that's fine that's the person who's probably going to notice even more things that are just the technical pieces they may come back with you have an excessive love of commas you need to get rid of the ones that are doing this or they might say this isn't clear to me how would you explain it to somebody who doesn't already know what you're talking about and then lather, rinse, and repeat the process until either you are satisfied or the deadline is approaching and you simply have to get it off your desk. Or in this case, computer. So take another deep breath. And lastly, go ahead and submit it. 
there are still going to be things that could be fixed. Everything always has things that can be fixed. And remember that for this paper, because this is the scrape the rust off your skills course and the honing your skills course, you will have the opportunity to submit a revision to get up to 10 additional points. So whatever you turn in now is not necessarily the final product. It's just where you were able to get it now. Then take a deep breath, relax, and do something that is absolutely unrelated to school to give yourself a mental break. Until next time.